Hi everyone, my name is Tina Holland and I am going to present a workshop to you on creating a teacher or classroom website. And by watching this workshop, uh, you will learn the top 10 reasons to have a teacher classroom website. We're going to talk about the top 10 tips for designing your website uh, as well as some things that you should have on your website. And then we are going to end this workshop with looking at some Web 2.0 tools and resources that you can use to build your own website. So one of the biggest reasons, and these are not in order, but one of the biggest reasons to have a teacher website is it saves time. Um, it is much easier to communicate URL addresses with students through a website and having links on your website than it is going to the computer lab and then writing the URL on the board and trying to get everybody in the same spot at the same time and then a whole bunch of time is wasted for that. Also, um, another way that it saves time and it kind of kills two birds with one stone is it saves time because the resources that you need the students to have, you can put on your website. You don't have to go and um, try to give links to resources to students or run a whole bunch of copies of papers, hand out papers. And so websites uh, not only save time, but then it's also a good way to share resources and save time in those resources. Uh, one thing that's really neat about the resources is you, is you can extend uh, the students learning and expose them to high quality um, curriculum materials in really exponentially and so uh, having that website is a great way to do that. Uh, having a website relevance students will come to see school as important. Uh, the, the students are already using websites I guarantee in a non-school manner uh, at home and so by having a website you're basically modeling for the students that the internet and uh, and being online is really a, an extension of, uh, of school life as well. Um, I think that that in today's age with our digital students they have a tendency to kind of marginalize the importance of school because uh, school is taught in such traditional ways and that's not how students um, learn best. They have access to technology and the internet and stuff and so by having that that uh, website it'll it'll give relevance to the student for school. Um, and then on the flip side of that it'll make you relevant. Students are going to come to see you as connected. I mean let's face it in our Amer American culture if you're not online, online that you're really not relevant. Uh, a good example of this, is, of this is just ask any business or, um, or an entertainer or entertainment e effort or even PBS. All you, they have created all this web content so that uh, people can go online and learn about them and, um, or, or like PBS, they create a, a web content to back up their television content. And so really having an online presence is very important and it makes you relevant to the student as a teacher. Um, access. Through including your, your contact information, an email address, or maybe even using one of the Web 2.0 tools that you can have up there like a Class Messenger or Remind 101. Um, it's a great communication tool and, uh, and it extends your uh, teacher access to home. Um, a good example of this is I would use uh, Edmodo and I would use the Edmodo app and it was really great because through the Edmodo app I would have students ask me questions about homework um, or if they needed clarification or we would have discussions through that app and uh, and I just loved it and not only that but it also extended that community out there. I mean it got to the point even where uh, students were sharing, you know, oh, you know, Miss Holland, I, uh, we won our soccer game today, or I got a new puppy, or even just saying good night. Um, but having that that access, that extended out access after school and beyond school, um, really builds community in the in the classroom. It also helps with your content area and clarifying any questions that the student has. Um, you know, having that instant feedback and that two-way communication is uh, is really important. 
Um, it's not just about you communicating with students and families, but it's also about the student and families being able to communicate back with you. So experience, by having a class website, students will gain experience by using uh, online resources. And this is, you know, this is a 21st century life skill. Uh, pretty much every profession nowadays uses some kind of online learning tools to provide um, services to employees and colleges and universities. You know, they're constantly ramping up their use of uh, online tools. Um, having a, a class website is, is the best launching pad to using technology in, in, a, in an engaging way. And, and then as you get in the habit of updating your site, you're gonna find yourself bringing in more resources and expanding your bar, uh, borders even um, you know, beyond the school grounds. And then as the process becomes natural and easy for you, you're gonna start thinking of, of teaching differently and you're gonna be searching for ways for students to create things with technology. Plus, plus you're gonna get better at finding resources and, and connecting with other educators, um, which again will feel and encourage you bringing in that technology and bringing in those 21st century skills into your classroom. Absent students. Okay, did that student miss school again last week Thursday? Uh, a website is a perfect way to let absent students know what the cu current homework assignment is and uh, also or maybe you have a student that's homebound or hospitalized. Um, with a classroom website if a student misses a day they they can still stay in the loop and then they can come back to class prepared and uh, prepared with their work or to contribute and then to catch up. Plus you're going to save time. I know that you know, we would always get that uh, paperwork, so-and-so was absent, please make a packet of all their homework they missed. This way you don't have to do that. You can just refer them to your websites. Um, also, it, the students who maybe have missed a learning target earlier in your class or, or even those who move in from another um, state or another district, this is a great place they can refer back to to help get them back on track or help get them caught up is through your website. Events, you websites are a perfect way to publicize classroom happenings. You know, is your class involved in a fundraiser? Are you planning a trip to a senior's residence? Um, is family night coming up or, you know, what's going on? And so a web page is a great way to publicize your events. And, uh, the a real big one and this is probably one of the the biggest ones is websites help um, create that family school partnership you know um, you can get connected with families through your website in uh, 2012 a survey was done called speak up and it was it was uh, done by project tomorrow and there were 39,000 parents that were polled and 86% of those parents across all the grade levels use text messaging. 60% maintain a social network like uh, Facebook or Pinterest. And, and then from 2008 to 2012, they had done the survey and they compared the two surveys, surveys and, uh, and they found that parents' access to a smartphone or a tablet computer grew by 128% from only 5% having access in 2008 to uh, half, 50% having access in 2012. And uh, those are pretty huge numbers. So what is my point? What am I trying to say? Um, the bottom line is of these results are that the majority of parents want schools to communicate with them digitally. And with a classroom website, you can easily communicate clearly with students and their parents. You know, and then also, honestly, how many how many of those notes, flyers, and new newsletters really actually make it home to parents? Um, and then also, again, with that communication, you can uh, you can have a one stop shop on your website, and through there, parents maybe you might want to use a a, an, a tool called Remind One Hundred One or Class Messenger, which uh, opens up that two way communication as well. Show and tell, you can show off your classroom. And uh, I think this is very important to have on every website and this is a uh, uh, excellent reason. Um, you know, strut your stuff. If you have students 
uh, maybe your students just finished creating a classroom project project that's completely magnificent and you know why keep that from the rest of the world let people know about it you know you do amazing things in your classroom every day share what you do with the world um, on the you know show the show and tell part of your website you can have pictures of projects you know you can have announcements about major successes you know just real positive things um, and you can you know this message will will go out to families and it, and parents grandparents and even the world and then not only that what's cool is you can make your students into published artists or photographers or writers and and uh, and producers with just a single click so um, you know one thing with students is if they are creating something for an authentic audience and then as that audience grows it uh, they become much more engaged in what it is they are doing okay so that was the top um, 10 reasons to have a classroom website so let's go ahead and talk about some tips for w website design in my opinion uh, web design is probably one of the most important things to consider when you are creating your website you know let's face it if it doesn't look good it's unorganized or it's hard to navigate no one will want to come back to your website so I'm gonna have you take a look at several websites as we're going through this and um, and you know all of them have some good features and some of them have not so good features you know we have some good examples and some uh, good examples of bad examples um, and as you view them it would probably be good if maybe you just kinda could jot down ideas and document what you liked about the websites what you didn't like about the websites so when it comes to you creating your website you can look back on that and uh, and apply those um, those things that you learned to your website so what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and watch the short video about the five most important web design tips. Okay, tip number one about web design, keep it simple. Just like the video that you just watched said, keep it simple. Don't include flashing animations or uh, or auto loading loading sounds or endless endless scrolling text all you really need is you just need crisp sharp photos or images you just need simple text that uh, that's well balanced on each page and you just need a few links and a few buttons to navigate to other pages on your website so keep it simple and uh, and here I want you to take a look there's uh, two examples that we're gonna look at and one of them is right here all right and then another one is right here and so I want you to go ahead and click on the links that's provided for you and uh, tell me what you think about those tip number two about your website what's the what's the point Put the most important information on your home page and then the secondary information should just be a click away don't bury information if people have to go to three or four clicks away from your home page then probably the information isn't all that important then you need to get rid of it but um, there's there's nothing that's more frustrated when you frustrating when you get onto a website and you're clicking trying to find whatever resource or information and you're clicking 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 and uh, and it's going way too far so um, so once again don't bury the main point images you need to make sure that the images that you upload that the file sizes are small enough so that when someone comes to your website they load seamlessly and your your page appears instantly the bigger your images are that you put on your website especially for flashing animation I don't ever recommend putting flashing animation on a site but um, the bigger the images the longer it takes for that page to load and if it's taking forever for your website page to load your people are gonna lose interest next website design tip and that is keep your website updated and uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and and kinda give you a scenario here okay so you are a student 
and you walk into a classroom and oh wow there is just amazing bullet bulletin boards they're exciting bulletin boards they have super interesting information on them they have neat and fun things to do and 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 to look at and you know it it takes you a while to get through all the uh the bulletin boards and and to get through all the exciting things you know it, it uh, time goes on and and you're going through them but then the day comes and you've gone through them and you keep on looking, you keep on coming into the, to the room every day looking to see if the bulletin boards have changed, but they're not changing. And the entire you know, rest of the year goes on and those bulletin boards have not changed and time has passed. And what are you gonna eventually do? You're gonna eventually stop looking at the bulletin boards, right? So it's the same thing with the website. You have to make sure that your website stays updated, uh, that you keep interesting things on it, that you keep your resources updated, and, um, and if you want people to remain engaged on your website, then you need to give them a reason to keep coming back to your website. All right, color. I wanna go ahead and spend some time here talking about color. Um, I feel that out of all the design elements when creating a website, color scheme is probably one of the most important to consider. And so we're gonna go ahead and read this article here about color theory and you're gonna get introduced so, to some basic color design principles. And so, uh, so read this article and tell me what you think. So, basically you want to choose a color scheme with three mild colors for your web pages. One of the colors should be your background and then the other um, one or two colors is where you're going to use those colors for your link buttons, uh, your header, and other de design elements that you have on your page. The colors should match. They shouldn't overpower or obscure your text. And the color of your text should, in almost all cases, really be black. I, I highly recommend that you avoid using colored text such as red, reds, yellows, purples, and other colors. Um, and the hyperlink should all, always uh, be blue. So here's some examples of some um, color schemes that work and I'm gonna have you take a look at them and, and you can tell me which one you like. And uh, here there's also an example of a, of a color scheme that does not work. Uh, one thing that's really great is there are numerous websites and color designing tools on online that will help you pick the perfect palette for your website. And I'm going to have you take a look at one of those tools right here. Uh, this is a palette builder. It is super, super cool. And I want you to just spend you know a little bit of time exploring it and, and look at the different things you can do with it and the different color schemes that you can put together. And then uh, you're going to go ahead and tell me what to think. In fact, with this palette builder, um, I actually have used this to pick out paint for my house. So a uh, really cool tool and have fun playing with it. All right, next web design tip, and that is fonts. Fonts should be simple and easy on the eyes. You need to keep in mind that not all fonts load correctly on, uh, on every single browser. And <clears throat> pretty much for all the browsers, the safest fonts to use are Arial, Georgia, uh, Helvetica, Verdana, and Times New Roman. And then, uh, and then pages, you, uh, one of the design principles you need to follow with pages is you do not want a whole bunch of scrolling pages. No one likes to scroll down a page too far just to try to find the information they want. Um, and in fact, websites that you're scrolling, 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 scrolling is very, very frustrating. Usually the rule of thumb is if you have to, to scroll more than twice, then uh, most people are turned off and will go look somewhere else. The only exception with this would be like a blog, uh, a blog site or, or articles. Um, those would, you know, it would be okay to be scrolling. So let me show you an example of what I'm talking about with that scrolling website thing. And so uh, here is a, a website. It's for the a public school. It is a school website here. And, uh, you know, and, and I mean, the design is, isn't bad. It's, it's pretty good, except for the flashing animation there that you want to avoid. But uh, what I, I wanted to do is I wanted to show you what I'm talking about, the scrolling thing. So here's the website and let's, and I'm gonna count. I'm gonna count how many times I have to scroll down to uh, look at all their information they have. 
So here we go. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so ten. Ten times I had to scroll down in order to look through all their information that they have to offer here. Um, even I think just scrolling through it is making me motion sick. But um, so that's that's what I'm talking about with scrolling. You want to avoid that on your web page. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at some a couple websites of uh, of great examples of what not to do examples, and um, and it's it's funny because uh, one of them is from a website called Web Pages That Suck. And you know, if you if you want to take a look around at that website, um, it's it's actually kind of entertaining and entertaining. It's interesting some of the ones that he picks out. So take a look at these two and tell me what you think. Tell me what you don't like about them or do like about them, and uh, and have some fun with it. All right. So onward for web design. Um, it's very important that on every page that you have wherever your visitors may go that you have a home button that they can always get back to the main page and uh, and this way you don't have visitors you know just clicking that back button on their browser 10 times to get back to your home page another link that you want is you need to have some kind of contact link on every page it can be really frustrating for visitors when you're trying to search for contact information and you're not able to find it and so uh, so make sure that the home page and your contact information is in plain sight on all the pages and it's easy to find and then uh, the last website design tip and that is that every link should be a text link um, you want to avoid icon links only. I'm not saying don't don't have icons. You know, it's okay to have like a, a icons or a shape or an image or something of a link, but you have to make sure that you put the text of what that icon is and what it does on the link. For example, if it's a home icon, home button icon, make sure you write the word home included in it. Or if it's an about me, make sure the word about me is uh, in, in there. And one of the ra main reasons for doing this is accessibility. Um, you know, when you're designing your website, you you should keep the ba basic web design accessibility guidelines in mind. And I'm going to have you look at these in just a second. But uh, the major categories of disability disabilities are uh, visual, which is can include blindness, low vision, um, color blindness, and then uh, hearing, which can include deafness and hard of hearing. Uh, motor disabilities, motor skill disabilities, um, maybe the inability to use a mouse or slow response time or limited fine motor control. Um, cognitive, there's learning disabilities, distractibility or inability to remember or focus on large amounts of information. And so these are also accessibility. I know this was number 11, but I, I think it's important to think about this. Um, accessibility design is important to include when you are creating your website. And so what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you take a look at the website um, right here. So it's just an introduction to web accessibility and, and has some great information. And then I'm going to have you watch a YouTube video um, hearing from students that do have disabilities and what what they need on a website. Okay, well hopefully by now you're convinced that you should have a website and uh, we went over some basic design principles. So what exactly exactly should be included in your website? Um, assuming that your website audience is going to be students and their families, here are the top 10 elements that you might want to include on your website. Assignments and due dates. And um, when parents are polled, actually assignments and due dates turns out to be the number one reason why families go to teacher websites. They want to be able to access assignments and due dates. Um, and, uh, and by the way, this is also a huge reason of why it is very important to keep your site up to date. 
a calendar. When students and families go to your website, seeing a school calendar is very helpful. Um, your website should be a one-stop shop and they shouldn't have to link out to other places or try to locate other places to uh, find information. And so having a school calendar or even a class calendar on your website is very, very helpful. Resources. This is huge. This is a great way to enhance your curriculum. Uh, it's a great way to extend learning outside the four walls of school. And really, the sky's the limit here. Um, you could put suggested readings. Maybe you could put some links to games that enhance your content. Um, you could have apps, links to apps that you find are great for your content. Whatever you feel is a great resource, this is something that families look for um, on, on teacher websites. Web 2.0 tools. It's great to have some kind of uh, tools that families can use, like uh, calculators, measuring tools, or even video tutorials, um, or even links to some homework help site. And so, so uh, having an area where you can have like a homework help or or tools to use, um, you know, if they need a calculator or whatever the situation, but having uh, tools linked directly to your website is uh, is great. Um, it's important to have an about me area and you know this is really an area where you can to toot your own horn you know you can let the world know about your education and your experiences let the world know that yes I am uh, qualified to be teaching your child and so uh, so having an about me is is great and then contact information as I said earlier your contact information should be on every single web page that you have within your site uh, you can you know have email phone number probably having some kind of instantaneous feedback uh, two-way contact information would be the ultimate but uh, but if not you know definitely you want to have an email address up there classroom policies and procedures this is um, also a great way to, for families if they have questions about, you know, like for me, I taught science. If they needed to know um, about science safety or maybe uh, whatever lab fee um, or my, poli my policies that I had in my class or my procedures or just, just information about the classroom and the operation, operating in the classroom, uh, having it right on your website is, uh, is a great way to communicate this with families. Um, there should be a link to the daily schedule or to your syllabus. I think it's important for students and their families to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, you know, they can get kind of a feel of uh, timing. Um, you know, for example, like with the syllabus, maybe there's a parent who's an expert in an area or maybe there's a parent who maybe can contribute something and they can see, they can see, oh, you know, you guys are going to be going over this this uh, information, hey, I can help out with that. So having some kind of class schedule or syllabus on your site is uh, important. And then uh, we talked a lot about this earlier when we talked about reasons to have a website, but uh, you should have some kind of link up there that provides opportunities for family partnership and family engagement. Um, you can have links that maybe maybe are uh, homework ideas that engage the families or a link uh, maybe there's um, you know mom or dad or grandparents want to get involved or they want to volunteer so you should have a place where there's information on how they can volunteer um, who they need to, to talk to or communicate with um, or even you can you can have an area where maybe you have a family blog section um, you know maybe you have some homework that involves the families and the families can can put the responses up on a an open family blog and then uh, much like strutting your stuff as we talked about on uh, reasons to have a classroom website you should have an area where you have positive class highlights uh, you should have an area where you know the neat things that are going on in your classroom can be sh uh, shown off and and um, shown to the world and um, and some you know positive successes it's very important to stay positive with uh, with your your classroom website and to let everybody know the great things that are going on 
Okay, so I am going to um, briefly talk about the top 10 website builders. And, um, you know, the thing that's really neat is with options like, like these, and, and here's 10 of them, and there are so many more, but op with options like these with website builders, you know, you can, you can literally create a site, a free site, almost instantaneously. Um, you know, you can go from having zero online presence to a complete classroom website within a couple of outer hours. And it used to be in the past that creating and hosting a website was tons and tons of work. You know, you had to know HTML code and, and, uh, and it was very difficult. But now, literally, if you can send an email with an attachment, you can create a website. Plus, one thing with these websites, they come with templates and colors and backgrounds and they look they can look great in a very short period of time um, you can make your website as big as you want as small as you want and and just you know with a little bit of front-end work I mean definitely getting it in the front end set up and running is where you're gonna have put all your work but um, but you know once it's up and running you're gonna find yourself creating content that that really enriches your classroom and and your relationships with families and educators so I want you to take a look at these two links here. Both of them lead to, um, to information about website, free website builders. And just glance through, take a look at, at what they have to say. And then what I suggest you do is maybe pick one or two out and, and click on those links and uh, just get a little bit of um, extra information for it. And, um, you know, I'm definitely you don't want to dig deep right now. Uh, just know that the that the information is out there and is available so that when you're ready to build your website you can kind of have an idea in the back of your head of uh, which platform that you want to use to do that. We've looked at the reasons to have a site and we have also looked about um, things you need to do on your site with web design uh, and also the elements that should be part of your website. So the question now is where do you begin? And what I suggest, first of all, you really need to think about what is the purpose for your website and what you're hoping to accomplish with it. And then take a look at other teacher websites, which we, we've done that here. There's a, a lot of examples here of other teacher websites. And then I suggest you create kind of a blueprint for your website while keeping the web design principles in mind. You know, what, what do you want included on your website and what do you want the structure of your website to, take, to look like? And here I've included an excellent guide called Design Your Website from the Bottom Up. And I want you at this point during this workshop just to skim through it right now and then save it for later for when you get ready to build your website, much like the platforms, just kind of file it back there so that when you're ready to build your website, you have access to these resources and, and, uh, and you know where they are. And then plus these resources are on our Pinterest board. But uh, this is an excellent guide and the guide has everything that you need to get started in creating an amazing website. And that concludes this workshop, Creating a Teacher or Classroom Site. And I uh, thank you for joining me today. And I hopefully you have left gaining some knowledge and are inspired to start building your website. And if you would like to learn more about being a 21st century educator, you can visit our website at WCSD21.com. We also have a Twitter, and that's at WCSD21, and then we have Pinterest boards as well. And once again, thank you for joining me in my workshop.